All right. So today we talk about shear stress in beams. In the previous lectures, we talked about how to calculate stresses caused by bending. And we have learned that that stress is normal stress. But the stress that you want to talk about today is shear stress, and definitely shear stress caused by shear force. But before talking about how to calculate shear stresses, before introducing the equations for calculating shear stress, let me solve a problem which is related to bending stress, OK? So let's consider this problem. <clears throat> we have a beam which is made of three subsections. Uh, the section on the middle, we call that web. And those two subsections on the side, we usually call them as flange. This beam has a length of 16 inch. And we want to, and this beam is subjected to two moments. On the right side, the moment is 4,700 pound feet. On the left side, it's 3,300 pound feet. We want to determine how much is the stress at these two points, point A and B on the flange of section number one. For determining bending stress, we need to determine how much are section properties, including the moment of inertia and the location of centroid. Um, we have discussed about that before, so I'm going to present just the values of sections, the value of centroid and moment of inertia for this section. Y bar is 4.43 from the top of the section, and moment of inertia is 346.5 for the entire section. The bending stress for these two points can be calculated like this. <clears throat> bending stress is MC over I, okay? But before showing that bending stress, let me look at this flange from the side. So I'm looking at this beam from the side, and I would see this flange, which has the length of 16 inch, and we know that bending stress varies linearly. The equation for calculating bending stress is my over i. m is the moment, y is distance from centroid, and i is moment of inertia. Let me do that for these two points. First, for point A, located on the left side of this beam. So moment is 33 100 pound feet. I need to convert that into inch, so I'm going to multiply that by 12. I is given. And how much would be y value? What should I consider as y for point A? Distance of this point to the axis passing through the centroid, which is vertical distance as shown here by ya, which is, in this case, it's the y bar. Okay? So that would be 4.43 inch. And if I plug the values there, that gives me 507 PSI. This is the value of bending stress at this point. All right, now let me calculate the bending stress on the bottom of this beam. The bending stress on the bottom is my over i, the same equation. How much is this distance? It's y bar minus 3.5 inch. So moment is the same as we discussed, i is the same, but y is changing, and that would be 4.43 minus 3.5 inch, and the stress value would be 106 psi. Now, let's calculate the value of bending stress on the right part of that beam. How much is the moment on the right part of this beam? It's 4,700 pound feet, okay? Now we can use the same equation for calculating the bending stress caused by that. So bending stress at point A on the right part, or sigma RA, is moment at the right part times distance of that point from the centroid divided by I. The moment is uh, 4,700 pounds. I multiply that by 12. Y would be the same, and I would be the same. And if I do the calculation, that would be 722 PSI. If I do the same for point B on the right side, I will get this number, 151 PSI, okay? And these are stress acting on the right part of this shape. On the right part, stress on the top is 722, and on the bottom is 151 PSI. Now look at the value of the stresses on the right and on the left. Are they equal to each other? No. It means that that flange by itself is not in equilibrium because 
the amount of force acting on the right part is larger than the force acting on the left part. So to make this element in equilibrium, we need to take we need to introduce a balancing force to make that element in equilibrium. Okay? Let's focus on that part. I will consider a three-dimensional shape. The total force that pulls that flange to the right part is called as FR, and the total force that pulls the element to the left side is called as F sub L. Okay? I will take out that flange and study that separately over here. So this is the flange that we are talking about. How much is the value of the force acting on the left side? How can I calculate that? To calculate that, I need to determine how much is the resultant force caused by that stress distribution. Okay? Um, let me show that here. This is actually, I need to flip that. So that is stress on the left side. So on the left side, as we saw here, stress on top is 507 PSI, stress on the bottom is 106, and on the right side is 722 and 151 PSI. So let me consider the right part of the spin first. Stress on the top of, and on the bottom is 151 PSI, and stress on the top is 722 PSI. Okay? Can you tell me how much is the resultant force of that stress? The area under that trapezoid shows me shows the resultant force by that stress distribution. How can we calculate the area of a trapezoid? The area of a trapezoid for this shape is half of L times A plus B. For this stress distribution, how can I calculate the resultant force acting developed by this stress? That would be half of 3.5 times 151 plus 722. The resultant force acting on that part would be half of 722 plus 151 times 3 and half inch. All right, <coughs> am I missing something here? It's a three-dimensional shape, so I need to consider the entire shape like this. Okay? So I actually need to calculate the volume of that shape, not just the area of that trapezoid. So how much would be the volume of this shape? I simply multiply that by the width of that, because that has the same section on the width. So that would be times one and a half. So the total resultant force on the right side would be this value. Does that make sense? Okay, that gives us the resultant force on the right side. If we do the calculation, the resultant force on the right side would be equal to 2290 pounds. Let's do the same for determining the resultant force on the left side. On the left side, the resultant force would be half of stress on the left side, which is shown here, 507 on top, 106 on the bottom. So that would be half of uh, 507 plus 106 times 1 and half times 3 and half. Can you tell me what part of this flange takes that unbalanced force? That part of the flange which connects to the web, that takes the unbalanced force. This is the area that we should consider for calculating that force. Okay? So let's calculate the area. Uh, for this shape, the area that is shown here, A sub V, is uh, the height of that is 3 and half inch and the width of that is 16 inch so the area would be simply 16 times uh, 3 and half inch now we know that the unbalanced force is acting right over here this is what we call it <coughs> unbalanced force how much is that unbalanced force the unbalanced force is equal to the difference between the force on the right side and on the left side. Let's discuss about what kind of stress is developed because of this unbalanced force. Look at the direction of that force. The direction of this force is parallel to that plane. So what kind of stress do you expect to see in that uh, cut section? That would be shear stress. You can see shear stress is developed because of that bending stress. 
that we have calculated. How we can calculate the shear stress in this case? Shear stress would be delta F divided by the cross-section area A sub V. We have calculated AV and we have calculated delta F, so we can calculate how much is the shear stress. I'm going to do that here. So shear stress is delta F over AV. Delta F is 683 pound, which is the difference between the force acting on the right, right side and on the left side. And AV, as we discussed, is 16 times 3 and half. And the value of shear stress in this case would be 12.2 <coughs> PSI. We have solved the problem for shear stress, even without using one equation for shear. I would like to ask you to solve another problem similar to this. Um, the problem that I solved was this shape. Now can you solve this problem for me? Everything is, this, is the same as the one that we had before. The moment is the same, moment of inertia is the same, the location of centroid is the same, even the bending stresses are the same. So bending stresses on the left and on the right, on the top and on the bottom, they are the same. The only difference here is that now the flange is one subsection on top. We are looking for what would be the value of shear stress developed in this case. So follow the same procedure and tell me how much is the value of shear stress in that case. <laughs> 